Now that we have the part type table defined and the corresponding properties set for the part arrivals, the next step is to define the sequences table. And so what the sequences table will specify is the operational sequence by part type. In other words, it will say part type A after arriving goes to the cut station, followed by the weld station, the shape station, and the finish station. Similarly, part type C, after arriving, goes to the cut station, uh, followed by the finish station, and so on. And so in Simeo, we do that using what's called a sequence table. So I'm going to add a sequence table, and I will rename my sequence table to be part routing. And so uh, Simeo will define the table and add a column automatically specifying the node visitation sequence. So the first thing we'll do is we will add a foreign key because we want to map the part routing table back to the part types. I'm going to add my foreign key and name it part type. And then we will specify which table key to use uh, as the foreign key. We've only defined one table key so far, the part type. So I'm going to specify that to link the two tables by part type. The next thing I'll do is move this column to the left. Uh, by tradition, the column key is the leftmost field. And so you can see by defining the key, we've limited the selections to part A, part B, part C, and part D, which correspond to our part type table. So looking back at our part definitions, and so far in our sequence table, we've defined the part type and the station for the visitation sequence. Now we have three more items to define within each row or within each part visitation of a, of a workstation. We need to define the setup time, the process time, and the teardown time for each individual row. Now in our table and in our the model that we developed earlier, the static queuing model, uh, we have deterministic values. Of course, in our simulation model, we'll want to incorporate randomness, and so we will do that using Simio expressions. So what I need to do is add three additional uh, fields, three additional columns, all of which, uh, all of type expression. The first one we'll define as the setup time, and we will specify that this is in units of time make sure that it's hours. Next we'll define the process time. It's also in units of time. And finally, teardown time. In units of time, units of hours. And so now we have our complete table set up. You can see that each row of the table, we have a part type, a visitation sequence, the setup time, the process time, and the teardown time. Now that we have the table structure defined, we can start inputting some of the data corresponding to our processing sequence and, and processing times. Uh, to incorporate some randomness in the model, we'll just arbitrarily choose some of these values to input as exponential and some to input as using a triangular distribution just so we can demonstrate uh, the randomness. So before I get started putting the data, I'm going to make one slight simplification. If I go to my sequence table, I have the accepts any node property, and I'm going to set that to false. And what that will do is it will limit the nodes so that I'm only looking at the nodes associated with the um, uh, with the objects. So instead of seeing all of the nodes, I'm going to see the cut, weld, shape, and finish station, and the ship station uh, in the under node selection. So I'm going to put part A, and the first step is the cut station. And for the setup time, we're going to use random exponential 0.4. So that I want uh, to sample from an exponential distribution with a mean of 0.4. For the processing time, use random triangular 2, 3.2, 4.4, and the teardown time is zero. So what I've input so far is the first stage in the sequencing of part type A. In other words, this component of our uh, processing. The second step would be the weld step. 
So I will go and again I'm dealing with part A. This time we're going to the weld station and I can put the parameters in. I'm just going to make this one deterministic, 0.8. Choose triangular here also. And tear down time. Let's make this one triangular also. Zero point four, zero point eight, one point two. And so I've now defined the first two steps in the processing sequence for part type A. At this point, we could continue inputting the rest of the data uh, for our sequences table, but instead I'm going to demonstrate the use of uh, external data source uh, for doing the same thing. So I've created a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that includes the same table that we'd like to have in our Simio model. So you can see I have the part type, sequence, setup, process, teardown time, and I've gone ahead and, uh, and, and uh, put in the values for each one of these cells. And so to attach this or bind this uh, to the table, I just go to the bind option and I'd like to bind to an Excel file comes up and asks me the file name, and so I will select the part routing spreadsheet that uh, I just created, and it lets me specify which worksheet, and I will just default to sheet 1. Notice when I do that, two things happen. It deletes all the data in the table and has the bound to reference right here. Now I can go up and set the binding options, and you have two options, the automatic option and the manual option. Under the automatic option, it imports the data at the start of every run. What we want is the manual option, which then gives us the import. Um, it activates the import button. We can click the import button, and it Simio then imports all of the data from the spreadsheet. And so now we can make in changes, any necessary changes to the Excel spreadsheet and simply re-import into our Simio table. And so as you see now, we have all of our part sequences completely defined. And because we used a foreign key to the part type table, when we look at the part types, you can see we have the little expansion symbol there. And when we click on the plus, we get the related rows from the part routing table and we see we have the sequence for part A, cut, weld, shape, finish, and then ship. For part B we have cut, weld, finish, ship, uh, and so on for part C and part D. So the next task is to tell Simio uh, how to actually route the parts. And so we do that by selecting the output node of an object part arrivals, for example, and under the entity, entity destination type, instead of continue, we'll choose by sequence. And that tells Simio that when an entity arrives to this node, to route to the subsequent station or subsequent link based on the sequence. We then do the same thing, and I'm going to use the multi-object select here because we have the output node for cut, the output node for weld, the output node for shape, and the output node for finish, and we want to set all of those to by sequence. Okay, so now that we've told Simio to use the sequence defined in the sequences table, the next task, and we're winding down to being finished here, is to specify the setup time, process time, and teardown time for each step. Recall earlier we discussed that we could have chosen to use the server object or the workstation object. In this case, we chose the workstation object. Basically, we chose the workstation object because it implements some of the, the functionality we need in terms of setup time and teardown time and use of the operator. So when a part arrives at the cut station, for example, we need to access the operator to perform the setup. We need to then release the operator. Uh, process for the processing time, then request the operator back to do the teardown. And so that process of using the operator for the setup and the teardown is called a secondary resource. And it just so happens that the workstation object implements that uh, automatically for us. So we could easily use a server object, uh, but it would require using add-on processes. And that's certainly something you want to make sure that you know how to do. But for our case, we're going to 
use the workstation object so that we can demonstrate some of this advanced functionality. So I've chosen the cut object here and you can see the um, pr uh, properties for the cut object over here and we have the setup time, the process time, and the teardown time. And so I want to have a specific setup time and because we have linked the part type table when parts arrive, we now have access to the setup time through the part routing table. So we can just type part routing dot setup time and you can see again we have the green arrow signifying that this is a reference property we want a processing batch size of one meaning that I'm going to process one uh, part at a time and I'm going to also use the part routing process time row or column uh, for the processing time so part routing process time and similarly the teardown time. And so now what we've done is specified that when a part arrives it's going to uh, look in its corresponding part routing table to retrieve the setup time, uh, the process time, and the teardown time. The only remaining task is our secondary resources. We go down to the secondary resources property and it's a repeating object. So I open and say I want a specific object, the operator, and then I need to specify which activities the operator is required for. In this case we want all but specific and the activity that we're going to uh, exclude is the processing time. And so now we have a secondary resource requirement for the operator. And so now we need to make the same property specifications for the setup time, the processing time, teardown time, and secondary resources for the remaining three workstations, the weld, shape, and finish station. And I will let you do that as an exercise. Okay, now we have our part sequences defined and we have all four of our workstations set up with the correct setup, processing time, teardown time, and secondary resource properties. The last thing we need to do is specify our uh, arrival properties, our final arrival properties. In particular, we need to specify the inner arrival time. So if we look back at our original problem definition, we see that the information we're given is the uh, arrival rate in terms of parts per day for each part type. We can then take the sum of those and we have a cumulative arrival rate of 1.9 parts per day. Of course, what Simeo needs instead of an arrival rate is an inner arrival time. So, so we need to convert the arrival rate to the inner arrival time by taking the inverse. So we have uh, 1 divided by 1.9 and that gives us the inner arrival time in terms of day and if we assume that our uh, flexible manufacturing cell works 8 hours a day uh, we can say this would be an inner arrival time of approximately 4.21 hours. So we can go back to our model and put 4.21 hours and we have the arrival rate, uh, the correct in arrival time specified by our arrival rate. At this point we can now run our model, so we'll click go and increase the speed factor quite a bit. And we can see parts arriving uh, according to the color combination, uh, hopefully according to our specified product mix.